Hey there, Sam. Notification exists everywhere in today's web app. If you're using a social media like Facebook or Instagram, whenever someone commented on your post or give your post a like, you would have received a notification in some ways, either through the bell icon in the app or through an email that was sent directly to your inbox. Laravel makes it easy for you to send notification to your users in the form of email, in-app notification, SMS, or even Slack. And now let's dive into the code right away. To get started with notification in Laravel, we first need to create a notification class. And to do that, we can make use of the artisan command. So let's go to our terminal and we'll type in php artisan make notification and type in the notification name. I want to send our users a notification after they have shared their post. So I'll call it post shared notification. And now let's go back to our project directory and inside the app folder, you'll notice that Laravel has just created a new folder called notification. And inside it is our newly created post shared notification. Let's click on it. And it turns out that it's just a normal PHP class that extends the base notification class. Let's look at what's inside here. We have a queuable trade, a constructor, a via method, a two mail method, and a two array method. It looks a bit scary, but it's okay. We'll go through them one by one. First of all, let's talk about the queuable trade. So Laravel allow us to send out notification asynchronously. That means to send out a notification at a later time rather than immediately. You see, sending out notification is an expensive process. It is not something that can be done within a few milliseconds, especially when we want to send out a notification in the form of an email. It will take up to a few seconds for the process to complete. So if we send out our notification synchronously, it might cause a blocking in our script and our app will not have a good user experience because our user has to wait for a few seconds before moving on. It's much better to perform this time-consuming task at a later time where the server is not that busy or to delegate this task to an entirely new PHP worker. And that's exactly what queuing means. Queuing is rather difficult to implement. But thankfully, Laravel provided us this helper trait called queuable where it contains all the helper methods for queuing to work. In order for queuing to work, it's not as simple as loading the queuable trait we also need to implement the should queue interface on our notification class and also set up a queue driver for our app. Queuing deserves its own video series and we'll discuss more about it in the future. Okay, next we have the via method. And this is where we define the delivery channels that we want to send out this notification. Laravel provided us a few delivery channels out of the box, including mail, database, broadcast, Vonage, and Slack. The mail channel will send out an email to the user the database channel would log the notification inside our local database and the user will be able to view the notification in the front end. The broadcast channel will send out notification to our JavaScript front end in real time through WebSockets. We'll dive deeper into WebSockets in Laravel in the next few videos. Vonage is a web service that will send out SMS messages to our users. And Slack is the popular messaging platform for workspaces. There are other notification drivers like Discord, Telegram, or Microsoft Team that are actively maintained by Laravel's community. The link is in the description if you're interested. In this lesson, I'll be using the mail driver for demonstration. The via method also accepts a notifiable instance, which will be the user that will be sending out this notification to. The to mail method should return a mail instance class, which is a representation of the email that will be sent out if we're using the mail driver. And here in the starter code, Laravel is using a mail message class instance to quickly build a one-off email. We could create our own mail class and load it in here. And again, the to mail class accepts a notifiable instance where we can use it inside the mail body if we want. The to array method is used when we're using the database or broadcast driver. Whatever is returned in this method will be used as a payload to store inside the database as a JSON or as the broadcast WebSocket body. Since we are not using the database driver or the broadcast driver, we do not need to touch this method. Again, if you want to learn more about the database driver, feel free to visit the documentation. Okay, now let's edit our to mail function so it is more useful to our user. I'll add a subject where I'll say post shared and I would like to include the post title here. Let's make our notification class accept the post that we want to share and also the associated signed link. And I'll make these two arguments a private property inside this class. Now back inside our toMail function, I can now pass in our post title to the subject line. 
I'll keep our mail message simple. So in the mail body, I'll just put in a button and say view the post here and chuck the signed link in there. And that should do the trick. And now let's explore on how we can send out a notification in Laravel. Let's go to the share post controller function that we created in the last video. There are two ways to send out a notification in Laravel. One is to use the notification facade. Two is to call the notify function on the user instance. But before we go any further, we first need to make our user model notifiable by putting in the notifiable trait inside our user model, which should just be there by default. If you don't see the notifiable trait on your user model, make sure to load it, otherwise notification will not work on our user model. You can make any of your other model notifiable by simply putting in this trait. All right, let's go back to our share method. And now let's use the notification facade to send the notification to our user. The send function accepts two arguments. The first argument is an array of user models. We don't have any users here inside this function scope, so let's do a query on our user model. I'll assume that our request body contains an array of user IDs where there are the users that we want to share this notification to. To get an array of users based from these user IDs, we'll go ahead and call the wherein method on the user query that will retrieve all the user records based on the provided user IDs from the request. Once we got our users, we can simply pass it to the send function in a notification facade. The second argument will be an instance of a notification, which in our case here will be our post shared notification. The first argument in the constructor will be a post instance, and the second argument will be the signed URL. And that's it, we're done. Let's test our code. I'll disable the authentication middleware again in our API endpoints because I'm too lazy to log in and configure the cookies in my HTTP client. All right, let's test our endpoint. I'm using Imsonia, which is another HTTP client because for some reason, Postman refused to work in my computer today. Anyway, I'm sending a post request to the share post endpoint here. And I want to share post ID one to user ID two and three in a JSON body. Let's send a request. And as you can see, it's taking quite a few seconds to send out the notifications because we're using the mail driver. In the actual app, we should be using Q to send out the notifications. All right, let's go to mailtrap.io and we see two notifications sent out by our app and each of them is targeting a different recipient. And one last thing before we end the lesson, we can also call the notify function on a user model instance to send out a notification. This was the second way to send out a notification that I mentioned just now. It will work exactly as the send function on a notification facade, just that now we're sending the notification on a per model basis. Personally, I like to use the notification facade because I think the API is cleaner. And that's it. That's the basic on how you can send out notification via emails in Laravel. As I mentioned earlier, there are other ways for you to send out notifications Please visit the documentation if you want to find out more. If you want me to make a video on the other notification drivers, do let me know in the comments below. All right, key takeaways for this lesson. Laravel provides us a variety of drivers to send out notifications to our user. For example, the mail, database, broadcast, Slack, and Vonage drivers. There are many more community maintained drivers like Telegram, Discord, and etc. We can use the PHP Addison make notification command to generate the boilerplate to create a new notification class. We can use the send function on the notification facade or the notify function on a notifiable instance to send out notifications. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.